everyone. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day so far. And I hope that, you know, everything that, you know, you know, 2020 has been a tough year, but let's try to finish the year strong and try to focus a little bit on weight loss. If that's something that interests you. Um, and so we're just going to hop right on in. So again, my name is Clarissa and I'm with Task Human. And what I specialize in is, of course, weight loss tips, but also Pilates, um, hit training, and if you've had a previous injury, I'm also able to assist with that. And so for today's topic, we're going to talk a little bit about weight loss. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my next slide. And I want to first start by talking about nutrition. And of course, you know, a lot of people say that weight loss is, you know, 80% 80, 80 of what you eat and 20% of, you know, the actual exercise part. So we are going to talk a little bit about nutrition. So the first things first is, you know, when it comes to weight loss, it's important to drink water, you know, because a lot of times we may confuse being hungry with actually being thirsty or being dehydrated. So a good tip is to drink water before your meal or when you're getting ready to um, eat because you may realize, hey, you know, I actually was just thirsty or a little dehydrated. So that's also a, a, that's a really, really good tip to um, add into what you're currently doing. And then also, second, read labels. You know, it, it sounds a little crazy, but I promise that if you actually take a look at the can or something that you're getting ready to eat and you don't know how to pronounce it or you truly don't know what it is, don't eat it. You know, that's a good rule, a general rule of thumb. You know, if, if I truly don't know what something is, why would I want to put it in my mouth? And so that's definitely something to think about as well. And then also, you want to make sure that you include some fiber into your diet. So foods that contain a lot of fiber, they include things such as uh, vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, um, raspberries, blueberries, things along that nature that are going to allow you or allow your system to regulate and allow you to use the bathroom a little bit more. Um, because fiber, adding a lot of fiber into your diet will prevent constipation. So we definitely don't want to have that. And so it's recommended that you consume somewhere between 25 to 30, 35 grams of fiber. And um, essentially far fiber, it absorbs the carbs within your body. It absorbs the carbs, the fats, the sugars. And think of it as like a sponge. And so that's why I said that it helps with constipation or if you find that you're constipated because um, fiber will do those things for you. And before I move on to the next uh, topic in regards to the fruits and veggies, I wanted to take a step to talk about the water again, because sometimes it's a little bit hard to remember, hey, you know, I got I to gotta have some water or I didn't realize that I didn't get enough today. So a general rule of thumb that I like to do is I like to set reminders on my phone saying, hey, Clarissa, remember to drink some water or I keep water within eyesight of me. So if I say I go to the bathroom, I may keep a cup of water in there or I keep a water next to my nightstand, you know, before I go to bed. Just constantly keep water within eye view. It's going to help you remember and it's going to also help with weight loss. OK, any questions so far? Are we you feeling pretty good? No. OK. <laughs> no questions on my end. If anybody has questions, feel free to ask. OK, yeah, for sure. And so the next thing to do is also keep fruits and veggies um, nearby for snacking. So, you know, it's very, very easy to stop by the convenience store and maybe grab some chips or grab some crackers or something that, you know, is very, that we like to snack on. But it's also more important to keep fruits and veggies. So you probably hear that a lot like, oh, you know, I'll keep an apple a day, keeps the doctor away. But there is some truth to that. And so when you're thinking about snacks that you like, whether it be crunchy or soft, you know, think about the texture and try to find a vegetable or a fruit that matches that texture. So that way you're able to still get that same feeling. So for example, if you like chips, go for celery because you're still going to get that nice crunchy feel. Or if you like something that's a little bit smoother, then maybe try some berries something that can kind of still give you that same feel but also a little bit healthier for you because that i hope that's making sense to you guys and don't mind me with my glasses i'm outside and i have the tinted ones so i don't think that i'm the cool kid on the block i promise okay and so i'm going to go ahead to the next one so 
Some more tips for weight loss. Take a moment and ask yourself, am I really hungry? And that ties into on whether or not you're thirsty or not. Because a lot of times we confuse being thirsty um, for actually for hunger. So think to the last time that you were like, okay, I'm really, really hungry. I'm starving. I'm starving. Oh, I got to eat. I got to eat. Versus, mm, I'm near Chipotle and that smells really good. I think I'm going to have some. You know, differentiate, differentiate between the two and ask yourself, am I really hungry or do I just smell something that makes me think that I want it? You know, balance between the two. That's definitely going to be one to think about. And also take a moment to figure out you know, as you're eating, am I eating to be food or am I eating to be satisfied here? So when you're eating, do you ever notice that, oh man, I'm, oh, I'm so stuffed. Oh gosh, like that was so good versus, okay, I'm eating enough and I feel pretty good. Like I, I could actually feel well enough to go for a walk versus now I'm ready to take a nap. So there's a difference between the two. So being aware and having that mindset of, okay, am I full or am I satisfied? Those are really, really important to kind of differentiate. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Next tip, you want to pay attention to your mood when you're eating. And I know it sounds a little crazy, like, why would I pay attention to my mood? Here's why. Because if you notice when we're stressed, do we typically go for things that are a little bit, you know, sugary or a little bit saltier? versus not, you know, or if we're having a good day, like right now where I am, the sun is out, I'm probably more likely to eat something such as maybe some avocado toast or something that makes me feel alive versus when it's rainy out and it's cold, oh, I'm just gonna want some chocolate, I'm gonna cuddle in my bed and watch Netflix. So pay attention to your mood and the foods that you eat that, um, that are into or that play alongside your mood. Because that's important. A lot of people don't think about that. But there's definitely some truth to that. And then second, or third, notice what time of the day that you're eating more and why. So for example, if you are not a breakfast person and you skip breakfast and maybe you skip lunch and then eight o'clock rolls around and you're like, holy crap, I'm starving. I haven't eaten all day. Well, that's why. Because you have to make sure that you spread out your meals and you're getting some food throughout the day that's going to nourish you. And so, you know, if you find that you're eating a little bit later at night, look into why you're eating late at night. Did you get a chance to eat something, you know, earlier in the day? Did you, was your lunch fully satisfying? Did you get a chance to maybe move around throughout the day um, in order to work up that appetite? Definitely notice what time you peak where you're like, oh, I'm really, really starving, like, oh, you know, versus the times that you're not. That's something that's really, 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 really important there too. And then the final step, or not, or the final step of this slide rather, how can you enhance your meals? So, you know, I, the way that I approach healthy eating, I'm not the type of person to say, okay, only eat vegetables or only eat fruit and that's it, that's the end all be all. No, I think there's a way to incorporate what you're already doing and make it into a healthier meal. And so here's what I will tell you. And so here are a couple of healthy cooking tips that will make what you're already doing and enhance it. So for example, think of the chicken alfredos and the shrimp alfredo foods that we already have, or think of any type of dish that you would use, that you would traditionally use cream with. So maybe try substituting that with say, maybe an almond milk, and then maybe not for the alfredo so much, but maybe for a cake. Try using almond milk or a low-fat mayonnaise or yogurt, something that you already use, but you can maybe find a healthier alternative to make that dish just a little bit healthier. Another tip, use extra virgin olive oil or a cast iron or a cast iron. So that way you reduce the amount of margarine you use or just you know canola oil. You reduce that amount. So that way your food can still cook without it sticking or you get that nice, that little charcoal fill um, at your, um, in your grill. So that's a good way to kind of combat those, those extra fats that are in your food by using extra virgin olive oil or using a cast iron. Another tip, use lemon or herbs in your food for, fla for flavor instead of salt. You know, we underestimate, we underestimate the power of herbs because they have a very, very strong 
um, taste to them. And so, you know, when you use things like sage or turmeric or chili powder, you can still get your foods tasting delicious without adding so much sodium. You know, it's recommended that, you know, Americans, we should get somewhere between or up to 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. But the average um, American is actually averaging somewhere between 33 to 32 um, hundred milligrams of sodium per day. So we're over a thousand there. So just by using lemons or different herbs, you know, into our food instead of salt is already going to reduce that number by a lot. So that's definitely something to think about here. Another tip, um, use whole grains instead of baked goods. Think, think using wheat versus white or brown rice versus white rice. Just those little things, you're still getting the same taste and the same flavor in your food, but you're just getting that healthier alternative here. And then also trying egg whites instead of eggs, you know, depends on if that's something that you like, but that's, you know, that's always a great alternative to do. You know, also adding grains or veggies to meaty foods. This is actually one of my favorite things to do in my own personal meals. I like adding quinoa, or, you know, I like adding any type of seedy little nut into some of my meaty foods because it makes it more filling without me actually adding more meat or something that's maybe not, that won't be as fulfilling for me. So vegetables, think of sauteed mushrooms or roasted peppers. That's always a great way to make your meats a little bit more uh, heavier without actually adding the meat in there. Okay, and then finally, another good cooking tip is for the cheese lovers out there. Um, when you're adding cheese to your foods, maybe go for a bolder taste. So for example, adding the extra shark cheddar or the goat cheese, because they have a stronger taste, you're less likely to use, you're, you're less likely to use as much because it already is strong and you don't want to overdo it. Okay, so I hope that those are some really, really good healthy cooking tips that you all you know, find useful. And so my final tip, and this is often missed, I will say, your sleep, your sleep controls your diet. Sleep suppresses your appetite and it raises your metabolism all while allowing your body to rest and recover. So to look at it as a, on, from a scientific standpoint, the lack of sleep lowers, lowers the level of leptin or your energy levels within your body. And so it can explain why you may feel like you need that extra caffeine in the morning or that extra boost. So that's why sleep change how your fat cells respond to certain things. And so I want you now to take a, take a moment and think about the last time that you had a bad night of sleep and what you did the next day. And if you find that, you know, maybe I ate a little bit more or I was more prone to snacking or I stayed up late and I was watching Netflix and I was eating a ton of popcorn or anything like that, remember that moment, crumble it up, throw it away and think about how you're gonna move forward the very next day and making sure that you set a time for you to go to sleep. It's recommended that, you know, as adults, we get somewhere between six to eight hours of sleep. So if you're getting less than that, then there may be, oh, there may be something that you have to do to adjust that. So whether you are turning off the TV or starting to wind down, getting into that mindset of, hey, I need to start bringing it down a notch. I need to start, um, you know, maybe turning off my phone. I know on the iPhone, you're able to um, set a set a, uh, a reminder saying, hey, it's time for me to go to sleep at say 10.05 and wake up at 6 a.m. Something along those lines, use your phone as a guide. It can also, a phone can be a very, very useful thing if we're using it the right way. And, um, you know, as I mentioned before, lack of rest makes you crave food. So you definitely want to make sure that you are getting a good night's sleep because that definitely is going to contribute to your weight loss. Um, as you know, if you have to wake up, say you signed up for a 5, 6 a.m. boot camp and you didn't go to sleep until midnight, do you think you're going to be able to hit that workout as hard as you could? Probably not. So that's why, again, sleep is super, super important here. And so, you know, I want to open the floor now to see if there's any questions about anything that we discussed or if you want me to dive deeper into anything. 
Any questions about anything so far? No? Okay. Well, um, I know I felt like I kind of breezed through that, but I hope I didn't move too quick. Um, you know, and essentially you all can find me on Task Human. Um, like I said, I, I specialize in weight loss. I actually have, I'm actually working with one person now. She has lost, I want to say three pounds in a matter of two or three weeks, but more importantly, she's losing inches and she's also building her confidence. Um, and, um, you know, I, I can, I can definitely say that finding ways to sleep better finding ways to exercise and also finding ways to improve your nutrition and ways that your things that you're already doing are going to be the key factors in your weight loss journey. And, you know, maybe you say, I'm not trying to necessarily lose weight, but I'm trying to tone up. Doing those three things will also help you as well in regards to toning up. So, and of course the exercise aspect of it, but just making sure that your overall well being and how you deal with stress, it's going to essentially contribute to your weight loss journey. So, you know, I, I appreciate everybody's time. And again, if you have any questions, I'm going to be hanging on here for, you know, the next 10 minutes or so um, as Laura takes over. So feel free to reach out, okay? We have a question for you. Are there certain workouts that are best for weight loss? So to be honest, it truly depends on the person. You know, a lot of times you'll hear, you know, hit or strength training or circle or circuit training. And I will say that those are super, super effective, but that's not always sustainable for everybody, you know, because if you have bad knees, or if you have arthritis or you have bad joints, doing those high impact exercises may not work best for you. So you may need something low impact, such as maybe Pilates or yoga or cycling. So I would say it's best for you to find a workout that you actually enjoy, that you're gonna show up for, and that is going to make you feel motivated to do. And just that alone is going to help you start losing weight. Hope that helps. Is there a place that you start with, um, with clients for weight loss? Like if someone came to you for weight loss, what would you kind of do with them? Yes. So I typically like to go over what I call like the three, the three cardinal rules. So I look at the nutrition, I look at their current exercise regimen, and then I look at their well-being. So, you know, I, I like to take a moment to ask them a little bit about their health history and see, you know, anything, anything that would be potentially coming up. And then I also like to ask their current regimen. And then from there, we try to carve up a plan. So sometimes I do exercise, you know, my clients because I, I am certified. I am a certified trainer as well as I have two Pilates certs. So I am able to create a really, really good program. But then I also look at their food. And I, a lot of times we think, we think more so it's just food that's on the plate. But the, the true key factors to weight loss, and I hope that we understand that, you know, looking over this slide, is that it's more so about the food that's off the plate. What are you doing things to nourish you? Are you sleeping well? How, how are you dealing with stress? Because those two things alone are going to contribute to weight gain. So we try to find things that are going to eliminate that. Then you're already going to start seeing some, the numbers go down. And so that's what I've been working on with my current um, client right now. Awesome. Awesome. Any other questions out there from people? Um, any specific questions for your personal diets? Um, struggles you guys have faced at all with weight loss and you want some tips on how to overcome those struggles? Um, oh, we got, where do you feel low carb diets play a role? Oh, I think, I think low carb diets play a huge role, you know. I think it all just, because the, it's mainly about finding the right carbs that are going to serve you best. So for example, that's why I said try to go grains or try to that have white bread or foods with um, Trying to think, or or potatoes, for example. Having a sweet potato is going to be better than having just a regular base potato, because it has lower carbs in it. So I think low carb 
they do have their place. But again, dieting is not a one size or one shoe fits all sort of thing. What may work for me may not necessarily work for you because we're all built differently. And so it's really important to pay attention to how your body responds to foods. So for example, if you notice that when you eat say potato chips or when you eat pasta you know the next day you notice that the numbers on the scale go up quite a bit then that may be that may be a sign that you need to take a moment and reduce your portion size or maybe have pasta earlier in the day or maybe only have it every now and then that's definitely something to think about you know within your diet so i, I hope that kind of gives you some insight it's really important to think about dieting as a way to nourish yourself and a way for you to find foods that you actually like and foods that are going to give you the best results those two go hand in hand they're not they're not mutually exclusive they they work hand in hand awesome and then any do you think intermittent fasting is effective yeah absolutely i do think intermittent intermittent, intermittent fasting is effective I think it's effective because when you are, are say you wake up at 6 a.m. and say you set your, your fasting time between, I don't know, 9 and 6, that means that at 6 o'clock, you're going to have your last meal, which means that if you do, you're more likely to go to bed at a certain time so you don't eat because you know if you'll stay up, you're more likely to break your fast because you're either bored or you're looking for something to do. You know, those, those late night snacks are very, very easy and very, very tempting to want to do. So I think intermittent fasting can be effective for that reason because studies do show that it does contribute to weight loss, but also it helps with your sleep because if you're, if you're stopping at a certain hour, you're more likely to, to go to sleep at a better time because you don't want to break your intermittent fast. You don't want to break your fast. So yeah, I do. Awesome. That's great. Any other questions out there? I think if we can sum it all up, it sounds like it's finding the most sustainable thing for you. Um, you know, making certain substitutions in your diet that you know are healthier, but not something that's going to sacrifice your ability to sustain that change. And with workouts, it's the same thing. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. I am a firm believer of finding things that you're actually going to want to do. Because I could tell you, try keto, you know, or try hit, or, you know, go to bed at 10 o'clock every day. That may not work for you because the whole idea between health and wellness, it's not a one size fits all. It's catered to every single individual, individual. So finding something in a routine that you can stick with that you're going to enjoy is really what's going to yield the best results. So yes, you're absolutely right. Awesome. It sounds like it's a great transition to uh, showing everybody how to find you on the app for one-on-one -on -one yeah. consultations. Um, if there are no other questions, I'm chatting out the link for everybody to download now. Um, I'm going to actually share my screen and just show you the app itself. So if you don't have the Task Human app, this is what the home screen of it looks like. You can find coaches just like Clarissa um, on the app. We have hundreds and hundreds of topics that you can find coaches for. Um, if you're, but if you're looking for Clarissa specifically, you can click that search button at the bottom, toggle the top over to provider and type Clarissa in, click on her schedule and then book sessions with her right away. So you can see the blue is where she's available. And if you want to book a session, you can click right into that. You can see the weight loss tab right there. And you'll pick the time and how long you want to spend with her. And you can have a one-on-one -on -one session with her. So you can dive deeper into your specific diet, your specific goals, your specific habit changes, um, and how she might be able to help you with that. So if you're if you're interested, please do download. You get 30 free minutes. You can use them all on Clarissa or you can find other coaches. So you can hop into yoga and anybody with a green dot is available for a call right now. So you can have a yoga session with Hallie right now. Um, and there are hundreds of other coaches and you can search by, you know, thousands and thousands of topics for you to find coaches on. So with that, I'd love to open it up. If there are questions on Task Human itself, or any other lingering questions for Clarissa before we close out today? Any
Any other questions? Yeah. No, looks like everybody, you either have the app or you're masters on uh, weight loss and all of that. Um, yeah, well, I, I hope this, I hope, yeah, I was gonna say, I, I hope that this was super um, informative, but also, you know, very warming and fun and, you know, friendly, because that's part of my personality, just making, making this weight loss journey and nutrition and everything super accessible to everyone. Sometimes it can seem very scary and sometimes it can seem so far off and you may not know where to start. And so, you know, look at any of the coaches, you know, as friends, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to help and guide you, but also we want to make sure that you feel, you know, welcome and that we, we really care. Like I know I really, truly care. And so I'm right. really hoping that um, I get to see some of you guys sooner than later. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, you know, and feel free to reach out if you guys have questions. Um, ask at taskhuman.com is a great way to access myself or anybody else at Task Human for questions that you have. Um, but honestly, take it one step at a time. No coach is going to jump you right into a huge overhaul change in your life. Um, we're trying to help you make sustainable long-term changes for yourself. Um, so I really do encourage you guys, you can chat with any coaches, you can chat with Clarissa before you even call her. That's always an option just so you feel comfortable. So please, please, please do download and check it out. It's free to download. You get 30 free minutes. Um, and some companies also have rolled this out to their team. So you might be associated with a company and have a full discount that you're not aware of. So with that, um, Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Clarissa, for this great talk. And I hope to see everybody in the app. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, guys. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you guys for coming.